Welcome to my podcast. Thank you for having me. I am so honored to be doing this. You have no idea how much I admire you and all of your videos that you post. You are inspiring so many people and you've inspired me. And I, I'm just like, I can't believe this is even happening. Ah, you're so adorable. So l- listen, I mean, today's um, podcast subject is fangirling. Let's just call it fangirling. Because I got this beautiful email from you and I get this from time to time. And the reason why I love my fans and you are a fan, the reason why I love my fans is because when you become a fan and when you let me inspire you, you let me change your life for the better. Mm -hmm. And then you message me and I get this in my DMs and I'm going to read this. This is your message to me. I'm trying the three month rule right now. And man, have I weeded out all the bad ones. Yeah, it's a very uh, complex, but just such a simple way of living life, especially within relationships. And I remember hearing about it a long time ago, but I didn't have the opportunity to uh, use it in my life. And I tried it and oh, some assholes, some jerks that are like three months. And I'm like, yeah, it weeds out the assholes who aren't respectful to my boundaries. And you are clearly showing me that you in the future will not be able to respect my boundaries in the future. So (laughs) bye-bye. It's just so, I never really thought to implement something like that in my life. I think it's teaching women that we put our foot down. You know, the first thing that we have to offer is more than just this sexual chemistry and connection with the other person, whether it, in any situation that I want to, I want a man to get to know me. I want them to see the good and the bad and not jump right into sex and not jump right into kissing, not jump into just all this lovey dovey feeling. It's like, can you be patient? Can you, can we wait? to get to know each other before we cross over into that world and I watched so many of your videos just to keep on track with you know even at points I had trouble being like ah three months and then I would just remember can we wait can we be patient can we push through and if we can then it is going to work if not then it wasn't meant to be and it's just uh it's a really tactful like inspiring just a way of you know getting to know someone yeah I love that you said tactful and inspiring that's such a great way to put it I want to introduce people to you so everybody who's listening everybody who's watching this is Halston Dare did I say your name right it's Halston Halston and you are a singer yes ma'am I'm a singer songwriter and you are young beautiful vibrant how old are you I'm 22. I love this. I love this because, you know, I get a lot of like, and and less and less now, but I would get people who are like, what is this? The 1600s, you know, like you're an old person trying to teach these old fashioned ways. Modern dating will not put up with the no kissing for three months dating rule. Why do you disagree with that? I disagree with that because uh, I grew up with uh being very transparent, I grew up with two very hateful parents. Um, they definitely did, in the modern traditional type of dating, long story short, I saw how it didn't work for my parents. Uh, I saw how it didn't work for some of my friends in their relationships. I even saw how it didn't work for me in some of my relationships. And it's not this 1600 rule. It's our generation is figuring out that our parents generation style of relationships and loving and lusting clearly did not work. So I feel like millennials and Gen Z are trying to navigate finding the most healthiest way of marriage, the most healthiest way of relationships. And then there's another half of our generation that's just like, screw it. I don't give a crap, you know? Uh, And for the few of us and the sides of us that are like, 
this isn't working and I don't want to grow up like how my parents did. I don't want to have a, a relationship like the movies where you're fighting and arguing and can't just push through the brick wall. Some of these people are just like, Ugh, this 1600 just, I even saw that video that you're talking about. Like, what is this? The 1600s or whatever. And it's like, no, you are a part of the group that doesn't want to change and doesn't want to evolve into the healthy way and style of living. And you exactly are the problem. You exactly are the issue that women and also men complain every single day as to why we can't love in the most correct, humanly beautiful way that we are designed to do. And I struggle with that with some of my friends that are just like, when I have gone through breakups, it's like, uh, just go fuck another guy, go have sex with another guy, go, go out and blah. And I'm like, why would I want to, I don't want to do that. There are other people out there for that, but that's not me because I, at the end of the day, look for a connection. I, at the end of the day, want to get to know someone and it's hard in today's society because everybody just sees this three month rule and this beautiful uh, you know, mature woman like you being on TikTok and, you know, these young millennial types of social media teaching us, like, I'm here to help. And those idiots out there that can't get on your level are just feeling like they have to attack you with some ancient style of living. And it's like, um, she's speaking facts. And <laughs> if you can't see that, then you are a part of the problem. So when you say our current way of dating that you feel failed for your parents, for you've seen it fail some of your friends in your own experience, what is that dating methodology that you're talking about? That dating method that I am talking about is the first word that comes to my head is lusting. Uh, you know, I find in a lot of my friends and, and my parents, you know, back then in, in that generation, and I don't blame, I don't blame them for, for thinking this way. It was, you know, do you have a stable job? Can you provide me a home? Can you provide me a family? Okay, let's go. And in, I feel like in my generation, the healthy side of my generation is now, it's not really like, can you provide me a family, family and, and a stable job? It's like, can you emotionally connect to me? Can you handle me at my worst? How do you communicate in an argument? And does our fighting words match each other? You know, who are you when you are at your lowest and how can we help each other? It's like, you know, super complex and I can go about it all day long and, you know, the emotional intelligence spectrum. But I feel like that method has failed because 10, 15 years from now, unless if you're really lucky, looks don't matter. As long as you are sexually attracted to them at the end of the day through an emotional connection, looks don't matter anymore. You know, when you get older, it's like, oh, he still makes me laugh to this day. Oh, he still buys me roses. Oh, he still does the little things that has nothing to do with looks. It doesn't. And in this modern method that some young people are still using, it's like, she's hot. Like, I'm going to go for it and blah. But he didn't see how her smile like lit up the room with everybody else. And he didn't hear how all of her friends were talking about how beautiful of a human she was. He was just thinking sexually at the end of the night and end of the day. And it breaks my heart because I wish that, you know, our voices could really reach out to that part of, you know, our generation and see that our parents really couldn't figure it out. And if they did, they are some special human beings. And there's a reason why it didn't work out. And there's a reason why you're, we are the next generation to change that and work on that. Open your mind to mm -hmm. see how it didn't work and that you can too not be a part of it and be the change within that. And I promised myself at a very, very young age, which it breaks my heart that I was having to think about the future that far and advanced at eight and nine and 10 years old, promising myself that I would marry someone who could communicate with me and somebody who could respect me 
uh, somebody who didn't date me and marry me based off of my looks and how beautiful our kids would be. And, um, you know, I almost, I also promised myself, you know, my mother-in-law and my father-in-law, I'd have, I'd get along with them because I didn't see that growing up. Okay. And so, you know, the, this method that, you know, is still existing around, I, I just don't think it works based off of the whole look and that we have and, you know, that sexual chemistry that first starts. It's just way more than that. Yeah, I agree. Some people say, you know, what if I don't feel a spark? Or I didn't feel a spark right away. And I'm like, honey, if I was waiting for a spark to get with somebody, I never would have been with my husband because yeah. there was no spark for us in the beginning. And I fell for who he is as a human being. And you talk about still being attracted to somebody after X number of years. And I'm like, we've been together for almost 17 years now. We're having our 10th wedding anniversary right oh, now. Woohoo! And, and, he, and he's so sweet. He's so sweet. He's so loving. He's so attentive. He's so um, embracing, caressing, gentle, affectionate. You know, he was the one who said, Hey, it's our happy anniversary, right? Like, just this, these sweet little touches that he still brings, he still is. And we are after, after 17 years together, after 10 years of marriage, we are still bringing out the best in each other. Um, and, and we got to know each other for two and a half years before we got together. It's the knowledge of him that really solidified our relationship when I went into insecurity phases. And I was able to look back at that discovery phase of really uncovering who he was and, and bring that into the present to reassure myself, no, 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 my mind might be going crazy because of all these experiences I had before him. But when I look at who he is objectively, I know I can rest assured I picked the right person. I'm curious, when you've been using this no kissing for three months dating rule, what is the longest you've spent time with somebody getting to know them before before saying you know what not this one and what was the reason why you walked away the longest that I got to experience was no longer than a month and a half and I feel like you can say like oh well that's you know that's a good amount of time no it really wasn't and I was like actually expecting it to uh go on a little bit longer and what made me change was um my new rule that I have given myself is in the, you know, for the future is three strike rule. And, you know, once you get those three strikes, you'll never hear from me again. We can be friends in the future, blah, 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 whatever. But, you know, I, uh, it started off really great and there was all this effort and all this communication. I'm sitting here going, okay, 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 okay. And then all of a sudden, as the week went, I actually, it all changed when we had the conversation of, are you sexually active, you know, and is that something you're looking for? And I said, oh, baby, I don't kiss for even three months. And he goes, three months. And I was like, yeah, do you have a problem with that? He goes, three months is a long time. I said, well, I guess we're on two different pages here because I'm looking for something long term. You're probably looking for something one night term and that's not me. And secondly, three months is not a long time. Uh, and when he responded with the three months, I was like, really Ugh, gross. And secondly, he was like, I, I told him, you know, yeah, it weeds out the assholes who in the future won't respect my boundaries it's an insight. It's a, uh, it's an insight for me to see in the future. Are you okay with respecting my boundaries? Because I have now given you your first test of, will you respect my boundaries in the future, whether it be something small or large and based off of your reaction, don't think we're going to be able to get there. <laughs> and last like a month and a half and other times it's really not lasted longer than four weeks. Mm -hmm. And it breaks my heart because I'm waiting for the person that does last three months. Um, my boyfriend in the past, we waited like five months and that was really cool. And uh, my high school boyfriend, it was really cool. I didn't realize I was using that tactic. Um, 
we waited six months to even just have like a first kiss. We just wanted to be so special. And I'm waiting to come across another man like that. Um, but yeah. I love that. I love that. What what made you decide to use a cerule? I wanted better for myself. I wanted change. I wanted to feel what, you know, you scroll on Instagram and you scroll on TikTok and of course the grass is always greener on the other side, but what you see in front of you, you just see all these couples who are just vigorously, viciously just loving. And I've been in those moments before, but it never was like what I could see on like the screens. And I told myself like, there is another human out there who is half of my soul, half of my design, who was put on this earth perfectly for me um, to love just as that viciously with me. And I finally just was like, I am such a high caliber woman. I am kind and I'm beautiful and I'm smart and I'm patient and I am compassionate and considerate. And I deserve that love. I deserve that time and that respect and, you know, boundaries respected on and on and on. And I just woke up one day and I was like, I'm tired of putting up with bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's when I realized I was like, okay, after watching your videos, I was like, I'm going to try it. And it's been, it's been very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) Have you convinced any of your friends to use the no kissing rule? No, I've told them about it. Um, They, none of them are like, I do have one friend uh, who is in a relationship. Uh, She's about to become my roommate in LA uh, when we move out. I'm really excited. Um, She just recently got into a relationship and she tried her own version of it. And it was no sex for three months instead of kissing. And she said that it definitely really helped him grow closer uh, and be patient within time. And I was like, could you imagine what it would have been if you like actually just done kissing? You know, like would it have like grown you even closer? Would you have seen a side to him that, you know, you have yet to see because of, you know, him putting pressure on waiting um, and that's what I see a lot is like, it's not so much that they can't do it. It's the pressure on them having to withhold, you know, that urge. Um, I had no sex for three months and it was actually really helpful for them. The rest of my friends are not really interested in growing and changing and uh, settling down either. Uh, so a lot of them are still in that party, wild fun phase. Um, I'd be really curious to see how it helps them. Um, I've talked to them about it before, but they're not ready. They're not ready for a challenge like that. A challenge, let me reiterate that, a simple challenge. It is a resisting of the impulses. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and I, I know you know this, I divide us into three parts, which is the biological body, the logical mind, your spiritual connections. The spiritual connections being when you think about a friend and a minute later, you get that text message and that phone call, you go, oh my God, I was just thinking about you. Meaning Mm -hmm. frequencies are communicating even if you're not in the same room. And so your biological body is designed to procreate. It definitely wants to come in, create that phenylethylamide, that aphrodisiac, get the get the juiciness coming, get the procreation happening because your DNA is driving your body like a little vehicle saying, make more of myself. So it is resisting the impulses, but it's all about, you know, am I going to, am I going to resist the impulse to eat junk food today so that I feel better tomorrow? So that my body makes more serotonin tomorrow. Am I going to resist the impulse to jump this person in order to be happier tomorrow, knowing that the person I'm with is somebody I feel really safe and secure with. So there is a resisting of the impulses that goes on. And I've done this. I've done it by accident, just like you did in high school with my husband for two and a half years. I did it on purpose when we split up a few times. And when you really like that person, it's hard to not kiss them. Mm -hmm. It is. And you keep moving in because it's instinctual to go create that phenylethylamine. Um, But there's something 
you know, like you said, with your friend, they waited three months for a first kiss and it deepened the connection. And there's something, you know, with that right person, when they are mature, when they are on the same page, when they are a good fit, it, it takes it to a whole new level. And it's not just about what you're creating before you kiss. It's about giving yourself an opportunity after you kiss to go back into your memory and say, because of what we didn't do or what I didn't see or what I did see, because my eyes are wide open during that time, I wasn't flooded by phenylethylamide, which put me in an altered state and made me miss the red flags because of everything I observed during the no kissing time, which was your willing devotion. And that's one of the things I talk about is, is you don't want to commit to somebody who hasn't already devoted themselves to you. You don't Mm -hmm. want to play a hoping game. I'm going to to commit to you and then hope you become loyal and devoted. If you're not witnessing that before the kiss, don't hope it's going to happen after. Make sure you do have it before the kiss. So it's not just about what you're creating during those three months. It's about the opportunity to look back at those three months to gain the reassurance that's going to help you after the three months. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I I also, you know, realized that um, there were guys that like, at first I was so head over heels for, and I waited, you know, to not kiss them. And at the end of it, I ended up being like completely sorry, disgusted by them. And I remember being like, Oh my God, what did I see in the beginning? And I just knew it was those chemicals, those chemicals in my brain that were just riling up, just going like make love. And, you know, after I finally got to be able to take a step back, I was like, oh my God, you're like actually nothing that I first saw you as. And I am dodging a bullet. And um, I was curious, you know, when our body is processing those things that you were saying that drive us to want to kiss, drive us to want to, you know, uh, sexually interact, what happens to our brain and the alignment or the chemical maybe balance? I don't know the correct word, when we resist. So... Basically, you're forcing yourself to into a logical state, you're forcing yourself to rise above the emotional state and go into the logical state. So the chemicals are happening. And either we blindly follow the body instincts to procreate without thinking, or we go, okay, yeah, I feel all of this. But what is the better decision for me? So, and the chemicals die down after a while. It's kind of like taking heroin, right? Initially that first hit, have you, have you done ecstasy, MDMA? I have not. I, the only, I've only smoked weed. Um, I don't know. My brothers have, uh, I mean, I have had the opportunity to try it. I just, I've got too much anxiety and I have no idea what I'm going to experience. Um, but yeah, continue. So the first time you you do certain drugs, you have an effect that's unlike any other. So heroin, ecstasy, MDMA, that first time is you just can't repeat that. You can't recapture it. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then your body adjusts to the drug. People who, who do heroin the first time is amazing, but the 20th time, not so great, right? Yeah. Because your body is adjusting to it. And it's the same thing with the own chemical, like with your chemicals that you make is initially it feels really rushy and it feels great, but then your body will adjust to the chemicals and then put itself back into a normal state. And so we call this a honeymoon period, this initial rush. We, we do, we call that the honeymoon period, but then your body readjusts to those chemicals and the honeymoon period dies down. So it's, it's, it, you know, it, The phenylethylamine definitely puts your brain in an altered state. If you're kissing when you're in mate seeking mode, your brain goes found a mate. So, Mm. right. It, it locks in found a mate. The next day, somebody might say, can I take you out? You say, no, I'm seeing somebody because the brain went found a mate. So phenylethylamine definitely has an effect on the mate seeking brain. And this is the more dangerous one when it comes to locking you into somebody who's wrong for you. And that's why that's the one we want to avoid. I don't say no affection. So I'm literally not saying no oxytocin, no serotonin, no dopamine, because I'm not saying don't touch each other, don't smile at each other. But I am saying no kissing because that chemical is going to lock you into someone you don't know. Mm, Yeah. 
Yeah, that makes sense. So when you were, you know, using the snow kissing for three months dating rule, you're like, wow, he's so great. And then the facade falls apart. What was the difference between what you saw in the beginning and what turned you off? What was the two sides of them? When I, what I saw in the beginning, I just see this handsome person. I see this chivalrous person. I see this, you know, soon to be type of boyfriend person. I'm like, wow, I see a lot of potential in you that I think this could really work out or be something. And then, you know, as I am resisting these sexual uh, tension that we are creating between each other because we're hanging out more and seeing each other more and getting into deeper conversation which creates like that sexual attraction um it's inevitable um I kind of saw them lack in the effort as time went on and on because they're going ah I won't this is what I believe truly is ah I'm not gonna try as hard anymore until those three months are up just plain and simple like I'm not going to hang out with you as much anymore. I'm not going to talk to you as much anymore. I'm not going to take you on as many dates anymore. I'm not going to try as much anymore, but I will keep you as a side option until those three months because it'll make you think that I can. And I kind of think it's that like toxic masculinity coming through, but that's what I gathered. And that's why I think that I just like kind of cut all those men out because I was like, you clearly weren't in it for me and now you don't get to have me at all mm-hmm. uh, and you know it really sucks because I did see some really beautiful parts of these people um that I were I were really attracted to emotionally and inward um and no matter how beautiful they were uh I can't get past that I can't get past seeing them be gross and impatient and see me as this uh, sexual object. Um, And oh my God, it's just a kiss. It's literally just three months. Uh, And clearly you and I were both looking for something different. Um, I'm not type of person to go into hookup culture. I'm the type to get into a relationship or a semi relationship, hopefully later on a relationship. And then I'm just being pulled into these guys that are just, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And I'm not for it. Uh, so it'd be really disappointing. And so then all of a sudden I would finally wake up. I would see the red flags. Uh, I would see that this was all a facade. This was my brain creating these chemicals of excitement um, and just being in awe of this man. Uh, and I like, unfortunately for some of them, I just didn't even give a warning. I just blocked. Right. And, and it was kind of empowering. <laughs> um, but that's how it played out for me is realizing and then moving on. I love that you had that standard that your attention must be consistent. Um, mm-hmm. because that's really important. I have a lot of girls, you know, like I've been talking about this now on TikTok for a few years. So I have people who were, you know, full on into it and people who were dabbling and the dabblers are getting themselves into trouble because they're using the no kissing for three months dating role, but they're not vetting. And so they'll, have sex after three months with somebody who maybe was inconsistent during that time, but they waited three months. And and so the dabblers are saying, all you have to do is wait, but that's not it. You you like like my darling, beautiful husband, you need to make sure that the attention is consistent, that they are showing up for you, that they are available because that shows their true intention. I want to show up as a whole person in your life. And I want you to see me for who I am. So I'm not pulling back just because you're using a no kissing for three months dating rule. I'm, I'm rising up to the opportunity to show you who I am. Yeah. And I I think it's really cool that you said, you know, it's not just waiting three months. Like it's more of that. Like it's not waiting three months and then, okay, let's go. It's like, I'm truly trying to see who you are, see you without your mask on, see you without this smile little, oh, this is who you get to see for the first three months. Cause they actually say like the brain, you kind of reveal yourself after three months Um, especially in a relationship and talking to somebody, those first three months are like, 
everybody's still kind of walking on eggshells. And if it's not eggshells, you're still like putting on this uh, fake side of you, whether it's good or bad, it's still fake. And you kind of let your guard down. Um, it's more than just waiting three months. It is taking the time to kind of unveil yourself. And when you finally unveil yourself, it's like, oh, shoot, I don't think I actually liked you as much as I thought. <laughs> and and uh, it's cool because it saves you the trouble. It saves you the trouble of adding another person in your list that you've been sexually interactive with and having to, it's like, oh, I don't have to also check off going like, darn, I've got to like unfold and unhold of like also being sexually interactive with this person. I can just say, I talked to them, didn't work out. I can move on because yeah. it's a whole nother story when you get sexually, you know, intertwined because that's a, a whole nother bind. And so it saves you the trouble. It really does. It also shows a lot about you, who you are as a person and what you want for yourself. And I want that for everyone, but I feel like it's definitely like where you are on your path. If you are at the maturity level to like want that for yourself, because there are people out there that just aren't ready for that. And that's okay. That And I encourage them that if you are still in that path where you're just not ready to settle down, Use this tactic when you are ready. Mm -hmm. Use it when you're ready. When you're ready to settle down, do this for yourself. You will thank yourself 10 years from now. 10 years from now, like you will be like, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> like, so much. <laughs> you know, obviously, I never approach this as a, you must be abstinent, right? It's, if you want to hook up, go hook up. One thing I say to people, like, you know, if you ask about my body count, the answer is, I don't know, because I just don't, because I've had enough fun for me, enough fun for you, enough fun for them, right? I've had all my hookup fun. I've had all my fun and there's nothing wrong with it. As long as you're not hurting yourself. And the way we hurt ourselves is if we have fun as a, a mechanism of trying to get into a relationship. So a manipulation, in other words, I'm going to be convenient. I'm having fun, right? Quote unquote fun. But really what I'm doing is making myself convenient, hoping you're going to fall for me and want to start a relationship. And I love how you said that using the no kissing for three months dating rule, you know, I'm going to paraphrase here, but made it easy to walk away from the wrong ones. And I had somebody recently say, it's liberating. It's so much more freeing and liberating. And the point is, if you are kissing and having sex, and then you realize it's wrong. And, and usually if you're kissing and having sex, you realize much later that it's wrong. But when you do realize that it's wrong, it's a breakup. It's a breakup. It's much more complicated to extract yourself physically and emotionally from this person versus using the no kissing for three months dating rule, realizing sooner rather than later, they're the wrong person. And it's simply a conversation, not a breakup. Yes, absolutely. I, uh, it's definitely very liberating. Um, I feel like it makes you stronger wholeheartedly as a person. Um, I feel like everything in life can become a lesson. Um, and I walk away from it taking as like, this is a life lesson. I can learn from this. I can grow from this and I won't have to make the mistake in the future. And 10 years from now, Halston, when I wake up, I will thank myself. Um, and I just, I, you know, I want that for every other human out there. Um, and for whoever's watching this and listening to this as well, like you can do this too. You are strong. You're powerful enough to be able to, uh, persevere through it. Uh, it may seem really hard. It may seem really easy. Whatever. Like do it for yourself, do it for 10 years. You from now, they will wake up and they will hug you so hard for doing something that's so like, uh, it is really liberating. It really is. You love yourself for making your life easier. Yeah. Yeah. So before we go, do you have any questions you wanted to ask me about anything? What made you want to get on? What What was the, because you have a very large following on TikTok and Instagram. Um, what got, what, when did you get started? How did you get started? Why did you get started? <laughs> How did this out? Because you're so like, you've got a huge presence and you've got a huge voice on these platforms. 
Uh, so clearly, you know, you had to grow it and, and get somewhere. So what is the tell all? The tell all is, is the universe made me do it. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So, I mean, I'm 49 now in my twenties, people were coming to me for relationship advice. And within a 10 minute conversation saying, I feel so much better. You're so calming. You're so soothing. And this was just a common theme for like over 20 years. And when it was time for me to imagine my next evolution career wise, it seemed like I should just be taking what I'm already doing and packaging it, which is what I did. And then I just kind of created my platform from 2015 into 2019. And then 2019, like I kept hearing people say TikTok, TikTok. TikTok. So finally I was like, fuck it, TikTok. So I put it, I put the app on my phone. I played around with it, watched it on the toilet and then started, you know, making TikToks. And like the, the first TikTok where I just, just brutally me, right. Just, I'm in the bathroom, I'm washing my face. And all of a sudden I hear the voice in my head say, you need to say this. And I literally just crouched on the bathroom floor and made a TikTok and it blew up. And Mm. I was like, because before that I was making little videos about my books, but I wasn't really talking. And I thought, you know what? People want to hear what I have to say. So I started talking more and then people started DMing me questions and I started turning those into TikToks. And, and next thing I knew, like, that was it. Here we go. Um, and, and so, you know, 700,000 followers later, like, <laughs> here I That's- am with you. Here I am with you, Halston. And, and every Halston out there, every 22 year old, I have so many of you coming to me, literally saying in my comments, we need you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Yeah, really. And honestly, it's so inspiring. It's life-changing. It's also really nice and very refreshing to see someone, uh, you know, not like, it's not like my girlfriend giving me advice. It's not like my, you know, guy friends giving me advice and whatnot. It's like it's kind of like mothering and it's so refreshing because I feel like a lot of that. I mean, I don't qualify you as old, so I don't want to say that. <laughs> you're very, <laughs> youthful, but you're, you're much older than us. And it's so refreshing because it's like, I feel so understood. I feel heard. I feel welcomed. I feel supported. And I feel like when I'm watching your videos, I have like a hand reaching out through the screen, just holding my hand and not being told like, you're being dramatic. You're being sensitive. Oh my gosh, just go on the date with him. Oh my gosh, it's not that big of a deal. Just being gaslit, gaslit, gaslit. And when I watch your videos, I'm like, I feel like I'm being heard for the first time in a way I've never been heard feel included and that's why I feel so many people's lives are being changed by you because you're speaking to people in a way I feel like they've never been talked to through a phone screen through a phone screen it's not even in person and you're changing people's lives day by day and uh, as also a, a creator on you know these platforms I think we often forget and discredit ourselves of like how you know, much we're being a part of other people's lives. And I hope you don't forget that. Mm -hmm. If you're, you know, doubtful, you just, you know, look in the mirror and remember this moment of me saying like, holy crap, you're changing people's lives. And please don't forget that. Cause I even have my self doubt moments where I'm just like, oh, whatever, you know, Um, it's very beautiful. And you're talking about something very important. And I think something that a lot of people are afraid to talk about. Mm, I'm here for you, my love. (laughs) Thank you. Mm. I I really enjoy. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad. I'm glad you love what I do. I'm glad you appreciate what I do. And I keep saying over and over again, you are my oxygen. Ah. I love that. Oh my gosh. I should use that as a song lyric. (laughs) That's beautiful. You are my oxygen. Oh my gosh. It is so, it is so beautiful. Wow. I think I'm going to use that as a song there. <laughs> Give credit. <laughs> of course. Tag, tag me on it when, when you, uh, when you put it. <laughs> <Yeah. form. laughs> 
I love you. I love you so much. I'm so grateful for you. I'm grateful that you sent me this DM. I'm grateful you're willing to do this. I'm grateful that you're one of the many voices of your generation that are leaning into something more functional because you know me, I say, let's do this. Let's you and I work together to change, not just ourselves and make ourselves happier, but infect the people around us, infect the children that we make, and let's create something bigger and better together and spread all this goodness. Yes, ma'am. Amen. High five. Mm. Got this. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, hopefully it, it this gets out and the word gets out. And sooner or later, one after the other, they're going to try it. It's happening. It's definitely happening. Yeah. Thank you, Halston. I appreciate you so much, my love. I appreciate you too. I love you. I love you. Make sure you have an awesome day now, okay? You too. By God way, bless. Where can people find you on social media? Because you are fabulous on Instagram and you also have a TikTok account. Yes, ma'am. So you can find me on all social media platforms at Halston Dare. Uh, and I've got music on Spotify, iTunes at Halston Dare. I've got a couple songs out. And uh, that's where you can find me. And I answer all DMs. I reply back in comments. I repost people's stories. So it's a huge welcoming family page. So hop on over. How would you describe your genre, your preferred genre? My genre, I would describe it as bold and funky, dancey, relatable, and fun. Uh, Super poppy. Uh, some of my inspirations are Dua Lipa, Ava Max, Ariana Grande, The Weeknd. Uh, a lot of people say I sound like Dua Lipa. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't hear it, but uh, that's one of my favorite artists currently out there right now. And you are absolutely blowing up like millions of downloads on Spotify. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I've got a new song actually, February 4th uh, from it's a song called Lonely in L.A., uh, it's my trials and tribulations that I face uh, in a city that I do not connect with very well. Uh, and it talks about kind of all the things, you know, my team used to always be like, don't talk bad about LA, but I'm so tired of like basking online. Like, oh my gosh, I should be able to say what I am, what I feel, what I hate and what I love. I, I don't connect well with LA. I have to be there, unfortunately. So it's not like I will never go there. I am definitely there all the time. I just don't connect with it. I don't like a lot about it. It's the most beautiful city. I just don't connect with it. And I wrote a song about how lonely and ostracized and like an outcast I feel when I'm out in LA. So uh, it's all, it's coming out February 4th. Uh, it'll be on all streaming platforms. And uh, hopefully I can find a cool dance or some kind of cool trend on TikTok for everybody to do, okay. do something. I love that. Look at you always thinking for it. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Halston, I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> I'll send you, I'll send you some links. I'll send you some links when everything comes out or future stuff. So you can take a listen to it and give me some feedback. Yes, please. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, my love. Mwah. Goodbye. Thank you so much. for We're Thank gonna you be- for having me. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. I love, I love having women like you on people like you because you know, the more conversations we have, the more people learn. Yeah, absolutely. Well, have an amazing day. And I look forward to seeing this and hopefully talking with you again. You too, my love. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.